guys, it's Heather at Homeschool Culture. In today's video, I'm going to show you what my sixth grader is taking for math, science, logic, art, and technology. And then I'll do a video right after this for the rest of the subjects, which would be like ELA, your spelling, grammar, etc., geography, and history. And I think that's all for that one. So I'm going to hopefully get this one out today, and then I will follow up with the next one tomorrow. All right, I have my cheat sheet here, so I can try to stay on topic. Um, I didn't want these too long, which is why I separated it, because the science I am super excited about, but it is new, and it is kind of um, an in-depth, well, it has a lot of parts to it, so, but we'll get to that in just a second. So let's start with math. That's easy, right? We're doing the epsilon fractions from Matthew C. We just finished, oh, we actually did it. We uh, have seven weeks left of the Delta, which I could not remember that on that last video I made uh, for the summer plans and the end of the year review. If you haven't watched that, you might want to go back and just see that as well, because I kind of talk about some things that didn't work and why, etc. But uh, we are doing epsilon fractions. He's not super excited about it, but I feel like some kids are just like that with math. They just think that everything next is gonna be super hard. I think he'll be great at it. I definitely purchased the video to go with it because I, sometimes I'll be honest, sometimes I watch these and I'm like, I feel like I could maybe tweak it different for him. Uh, but sometimes it's definitely needed, not because I don't remember how to do this stuff, but uh, I just feel like he, I never taught math. I was a high school t teacher and I was a high school counselor and I would probably never teach math because it's definitely a hard subject to teach. I don't know if y'all agree with that um, for people that necessarily aren't geared towards math. Does that make sense? Like I am geared towards math. So teaching somebody who's not, it's hard for me personally. All right, so this is Matthew C. Okay, math notebook. I purchased this last year or something similar. It has one and a half inches squares, one and a half inch squares. And so uh, this just keeps it easier to me, in my opinion. I got it off Amazon. Does it say a name? No. I got it off Amazon. It just, it's, it just keeps it cleaner for the student um, to work out the problems. If you are new to me, um, my son is dyslexic, has dysgraphia, which I think is getting a lot better. I'm just going to that out there. Um, but he also has uh, dyscalculia, which is the easiest way to describe it for my child, I'm sure there's different variations, is he has problems with rote memory. So um, remembering the math facts of like, you know, six plus five is 11. He, I would say he has mastered his addition because of these types of workbooks that I'm about to show you. Uh, he still struggles a little with the subtraction, but he's getting it a lot better because he does know the facts. Now he has not mastered the multiplication, of course, then not to the division either. And again, we are working on that. So uh, this last school year, we had books similar to this. I think it was the Kumon. Was it Kumon that I used? I honestly don't remember. Um, that we used for just uh, simple math, math fact repetition or repetitive type work. We do not do time test. We do not do that. But you can see it has 60 questions per page. We probably won't do all 60 in the beginning. We might or might not get to that level at the end, just depending on how quick he, he gets it. Um, but working on this rote memory type work does help and is absolutely needed for kids who have dyscalculia, dyscalculia, however you want to pronounce it. If you think your child maybe has um, like that type of tendency of, of not understanding rote memory, et cetera, et cetera, then I would definitely check out that video on my channel and it just kind of helps you on ways to, to work through it. This is, these are things that I got from Scottish Rite. Okay, so I am definitely an eclectic homeschool parent. You definitely have an eclectic homeschool. I definitely lean towards Charlotte Mason. For my daughter, I probably leaned more towards classical um, but both I've incorporated traditional work as well. And so for my son, I honestly think that the Charlotte Mason approach is going to be best fit for him. Pretty much from this point forward, I'm definitely going to consider myself still eclectic. Trust me, I'm not a purist, but we definitely do a lot of Charlotte Mason-ish work. That includes this year science, which we are using, I'm happy to say, the Sabbath Mood homeschool living science study guides. And the way I do it is I have three terms per year, the 12 week terms. 
and that's how this is set up as well. And so we are going to do weather for the first term. This is just the study guide, which you purchase off of Amazon. And then you have to purchase the spine. They call it a spine that goes with it, which is rain, hail, sleet, and snow. The second one is geology, which we've done actually, I feel like we did geology maybe two years ago, but it's something that we have really enjoyed in our family. And so I wanted to do it again. He was on board. And so it's the first book of earth is the spine. And the last unit is going to be botany. And that's the first book of plants. And the way this is set up, it's a three day a week program. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at my cheat sheet for this. The first lesson of the week is nature lore. And I'm gonna show you some nature lore books in a second. The second one is using this right here, the actual living science study guides where you're working on natural history of science uh, work. And so you'll have reading and activities. The third one is what they consider special studies. And that is whatever you and your child choose. We chose insects, small mammals, and reptiles. And so every day is a little different. And if you want a look through of one of these or all of these or whatever, um, how it's kind of set up, let me know because it is, it's not a very big book, but there's a ton of information in here and um, a lot of like QR codes and things like that for you to be able to go to her website to get more information on it. It's, it's awesome. I love it. I haven't started it, <laughs> but I love it so far. So some nature lore books, because again, that's what you do the first day of the week, or the, excuse me, the first day that you do it, you do it three days a week. I got By the Pond and River. Now, this is actually a form one, which would be like your first through third grade. Form two is like fourth through sixth grade. And so I got By the Pond and River. So he will read this and narrate uh, one day a week from this for the first term. And then the second and third term, I got the storybook of science. And the same thing, he will read and narrate from this. For the, the studies, I got, I only have this one so far. I haven't picked the other two books yet, but this is books, uh, the book of insects. And it goes, um, and so if you're like, well, how much do you read a day? And da, 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 all that, all of that information is in that study guide. So don't feel like you're going into it and having to figure all that out. All of that is in there for you in terms of like how many days a week should you read, or excuse me, how many pages you should read per uh, lesson, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they also have some suggestions of like leisurely, leisurely reading for each topic area. And so I picked up this man who named the clouds. I thought that was really interesting. And so I picked this up for us to read through and just kind of reiterate when we're doing our cloud study. And I also, because I love my Dover coloring books, I picked this up all about weather. And I thought that potentially, depending on what we're learning that day, I could print off, you know how, if you've watched my videos before, I love buying watercolor paper. That's just, um, uh, what do you call that? It's not, it's not bound. It's just, um, I don't know. It's like a ream of paper, of, but it's watercolor paper. And so I copy it. I, I make copies on my printer copier and then um, he likes to watercolor. And so I thought that would be fun, just kind of something as maybe I'm doing the reading, he could do that. And then they suggest, actually I'm not sure if these are suggestion, I think they're considered compliments. The Handbook of Nature Study, these are normally geared towards the parent just to kind of get in, you know, additional information. I love having these on hand. Normally the Handbook of Nature Study is that really, really big one. I've had it before I ended up selling it on um, Facebook Marketplace because I saw these and I was like, oh, I want those. I wish I would have got hard. I did hard cover on this one. This one I purchased last year and didn't. But this will help with the plant study that we're gonna do, the botany. It also includes just kind of an intro to nature study, bird study, and insect study, which I guess we could use the first term as well. And then this is the handbook of nature study that um, the section on rocks, minerals, weather, and stars. But what I like about these is that you're not in that big, cumbersome book. What I like is like most of the pictures in here are going to be um, in color. And so I enjoy that. So I hope to get the whole collection over time, maybe like one a year or whatever. And again, I'm going to try to remember to get the hardback. So that is science. Again, there's, I feel like I didn't do a very good job explaining all of it. So if you do want an in-depth um, kind of breakdown of how it works and a look through, then put that down in the description and I will get to that. Okay, the next thing, okay, y'all are gonna laugh. 
Um, well, let me do this one first. Okay, so logic, we have done logic in the past. I even think I had it maybe on my fifth grade last year and we did like a couple. I found that he, and there's nothing wrong with this, but I found that it was me doing most of the work. He just wasn't there yet. So I picked up this logic work book for the gritty kids ages eight to 10. So going, again, it's a little bit under, but that's okay. And um, yeah, I like it because it's a little different than like the mind benders one. And so we'll probably only do this one or two days a week. If he enjoys it, maybe I'll make, you know, if he enjoys it, maybe I'll put it on the schedule more, but I really want it to be something that we do together in the beginning. And then he starts doing on his own, maybe with me helping with instructions. So I'm excited about that. Okay. This next thing, if you watched my previous video, um, of the review, the end of the year, end of the year review slash summer plans, I talked about how we kind of let this, the art work go like to the side and we just kind of stopped doing it. He does not like it. He doesn't like it. And so I think I even said in that video, then we'll just won't do it. Duh. I bought this. I completely forgot. I don't know if y'all do that. I purchased curriculum and then I'm like, oh, okay, well, we're going to pick this back up. And then all of a sudden I was thumbing through it in the beginning and I'm like, oh, okay. Because it starts out with art elements. And hold on, let me find it. I literally, I think I showed y'all this. It's something very similar in that other book. He was not happy about it. He did not like it. He thought it was boring. He didn't want to do it. And then it clicked. He is creative when he wants to be, but he likes, kind of like I do, he likes working on the computer. I apologize, I keep looking over here. I'm used to, my phone slipped around different. Anyways, he usually click, he usually works on he likes making stuff like in Canva. He'll make all types of stuff. If you don't know what Canva is, it's kind of like a graphic design-ish, very low level um, uh, program online. And there's a paid version and an unpaid version. The paid version obviously has more elements and things like that, that to work with, but he loves working in it. So I thought what better way than to reintroduce some of these elements, not all of them, but maybe some of them, and have him create them in Canva. I think he is going to love it. So that is one thing. I think Canva is like around $11 a month. And so we're definitely going to do that. Uh, another thing is art appreciation, which I haven't looked at very many of those. But um, the next is using what I really bought this for, which I thought was cool, is that he it uses books that very common books that we love and you know kid books and then has the kid create some type of artistic um, activity with that one of the first things you do is you read where the wild things are which we love that book in this house and then they create their own monster um, again i might give him the opportunity to do it on paper maybe with chalk pastels uh, paint or even you know, again, make it in Canva if that's something I think he would enjoy. So if your kiddo is anything like mine and does not like art, maybe gear them towards doing stuff on the inner or, you know, doing things through technology and maybe it will spark that creative side of them. Because I've always said my child is not a creative. I've always, let me rephrase that. I've always thought, I don't usually say it out loud. I try not to say things like that out loud to him, but I've always thought he's just not a creative. He doesn't enjoy it. He doesn't like it. He's very much show me how to do it and I'll, you know, produce it. Like I said, he likes art hubs sometimes where he'll go on a, um, he'll go for like, you know, three to four days to a week every day and he'll make something off of art hub, but he's not one like my daughter who would just draw me pictures and, you know, and bring them to me. He's never been like that. So I don't know if that's a boy thing, if that's him or what. Next thing is technology. He loves photography. I told you during the summer plan, I think I talked about some of the technology that we're gonna do. So if you haven't watched that video, um, you might wanna go back and look at that. It, again, part of it is um, our plans or what we did last year in a kind of an end of the year review hits and misses. And the second portion was uh, summer plans. But for technology for the fall, we are going to start Adobe Photoshop. I'm hoping to get him a decent camera of course we could use our cell phones or well, he didn't have a cell phone, but we could use my cell phone, but I want to get him a decent camera, something that maybe the not, 
let me phrase this. It's not necessarily his camera, but something for the family and he can utilize it. I have an old Canon from like 2000, that's like eight, 12 megapixel, megapixel, something like that, a uh, point and shoot. And he, no, it's not, it's a digital, yeah. Um, digital camera and he loves it. He goes out, he'll be out for hours during, you know, nice weather. And he will just take all these different pictures of nature, you know, bugs and birds and trees and all types of stuff. He loves it. And so he started messing around with like online photo editing. But I was like, you know what, let's do Adobe. I taught Adobe in high school, whenever I taught high school, that was one of the classes I would teach was like a multimedia class. And so I was like, well, let's do Adobe. And it's a little expensive, I know that. They do have cheaper versions. I cannot think like Photoshop Elements is a cheaper one you can do. And we might even start with that and just kind of see how far we get. So I just realized that I talked about the Photoshop, the Adobe Photoshop and why we're gonna do it, et cetera, et cetera. But I didn't go into what we're using, how I missed that, because it's not in front of me. We have, they add, or Adobe actually has videos online going over like different sections. If you've never done like Photoshop or anything like that, it's extremely extensive. I mean, I, I, I already explained to him, there's no way I'm gonna be able to teach you everything in here, but we can do some basic stuff. And they are very good about putting things out on YouTube um, on like lessons, essentially lessons. And so that is what we'll be doing. And so what I'll probably do is do these lessons with him because I got to redo it with myself because again, it's been a decade almost since I've done them. And so do these lessons with him and make sure he grasps how to do the work and then do other, um, what am I trying to say? Like create other activities for him which well, honestly, I'm going to be honest, it might even just be me going to Pinterest and Google and typing in, you know, uh, Adobe Photoshop activities for, for high school or I, I'll do middle school, but most of the time you'll have this class in high school. I definitely think if your kid's a computer kid, he or she probably definitely could do it in middle school at sixth grade level as well. And so uh, just little activities and they don't have to be this grand thing. It can just be um, small little activities for them to work on so that they're gaining that knowledge and, um, you know, attaining and keeping it. So. But I really wanted to do three weeks, or excuse me, 12 weeks of Photoshop, 12 weeks of a, um, and I might just use iMovie instead of Premiere. I haven't decided on that one, which is video editing, which I think he'll have fun with. And then um, I cannot remember the third one. And of course it's on my notes on my phone, but it's kind of a graphic design one i think indesign maybe was it indesign i'll have to do reviews on it each term kind of do a review for each term especially because i have so i feel like i'm gonna have so much going not just for the stuff i've shown you but for the other material where each term is a little bit different and so i should definitely do like into the term reviews for y'all but that is it that is what we're doing for math science uh art logic and technology and I'm gonna get this other video going here in a second. I know I keep looking at the wrong, wrong area. Um, and talk about that, which I'm really excited about, of course, the geography, because I love geography and the history portion. Um, ELA, you know, it's ELA, it's not too bad. But I do have a question for y'all about that one. So I'll put that over there. Okay, I hope y'all have a super blessed day and a blessed week. Please, um, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Also hit that like button. It just makes the algorithm happy. And put a comment down below. Is there anything that you saw that you're interested in that you're like, ooh, I like that. Or is there anything that you're doing that you want to share? Put that down below too. I hope you have a super blessed day and a blessed week. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.